Alright, let's talk about game 4 and 5 of the grand final of M5 and the crucial moments of each match. From the draft, you could tell that AP Brand had prepared a variety of strategies. If we talk about Glass Cannon Marksman, 1-1 one -one definitely fits that description. She can inflict so much damage, but it is one of the most fragile marksmen in the game. But to counter that, they pick Angel as well. Now that's a lot more sustained. On the other hand, Onyx probably was starting to feel the pressure since they got completely dominated in those two losses, so they probably pick Hayabusa for that comfort and it's an iconic pick for Kairi. Also, I think they wanted Assassin to see if they could burst 1-1 instantly, but like I said, this will not be the case since Brain got Angel as well. Throughout the entire series, Club TC, aka Brand's fighter, always plays super aggressively, and a lot of times it pays huge dividends. He's constantly delaying or denying farm from Kyrie, and to be fair, they didn't seem like anything they could do against Thamus during the early stage of the game. Kyrie is already down almost half HP and used his second skill, but he had no choice because Flap TC forced him to do that. Only they managed to steal the turtle, but they lost and we lose a lot more in return. Composition wise, AP Brain just had much better heroes for team fights. It was really impressive seeing how well they drafted in almost every single match of the grand final. Also, Brain loves to draft heroes that have a lot of sustain and can zone out the opponents with low risk of being killed while doing that. This part, I was really impressed with Bren, and it truly shows how much they study Onyx after they lost against them in the semi. Kaja, aka Keyboy, was trying to be super sneaky by going behind the opponent's backline way before the turtles spawn. Normally, nobody would expect the opponents to be hiding in this bush, but because Keyboy has been doing the same play multiple times, they really learned his pattern, and now they know what to expect. They spotted him. Keyboy all alone, isolated. Still with a flicker now. Kyle T's with a heavy spin. Locks Keyboy down. Super. Now without the roamer, there was a free lord. Six zero and three. That's a problem. An AP Bren. Even though retribution. Forward, look for one more. Who's zone away? Meanwhile, Kyle. All this time, he's still on the Lord and he gets it for free! He does a bit more damage onto him, but AP Brand will stay disciplined. They have a 7,000 gold lead. They'll look for another wave in the mid lane this time around. AP Brand still with a lot of resources. Sans coming down into the mid lane with a splash of damage. Boots standing in the front. Flap TZ looking for an engage. Cal TZ soaking the damage in. Divine Judgment on the Flap TZ with no vengeance this time around, but he has it back on cooldown now. The base turret cracked open in the mid lane. Ogwin gets the immortality. Keyboy with a whip. But that's three base turrets down for Onik. And AP Bren are still, are still lingering. Oof, getting caught there was the last thing Onik needed. Sons, but it's not enough! The mage, the Gila Sons, has been taken down. And it's AP Bren, five against four. Super Marco looking for all the weakness points. Mid away, still gonna be cleared away. Does Boots have the Thamas in his arsenal? 
If I'm not mistaken, Kalkisa is also a great Fanny player, so the moment Onyx first picked 1 1, there was the possibility that Bren could have picked Angela plus Fanny and just one shot 1 1 every time. Also, Onyx picked nobody as well, so now Fanny has two extremely easy targets to go for. So for that third spot, instead of the Arlo pick, picking Fanny there would not have been too bad. But I guess Frederick was giving them such good result, so they just stuck to that comfort pick. I mean, why try to fix something that's not broken, right? And Onyx knowing that Brent picking Fanny was still a possibility, they decided to ban her. That was definitely a great move. Is this a MOBA or a chess game? Actually a lot of people still think that mobile legends or MOBA games in general is mainly about the individual's mechanics, but I will say that the strategic part such as the macro, drafting and so on plays an even bigger role because when you are at this professional level already, the skill in mechanics is usually pretty minuscule. If you are decent at the game, as long as you keep practicing every single day for about 8 plus hours a day, your mechanics should be in theory be quite similar to the pros, then all you need is experience in the professional scenes. Look at Kaltisi, his small jungle creep is available, but instead he's choosing to invade the opponent's jungle to steal farm from them. These little macro decisions matter a lot, especially in the early game. And it's precisely because of this that in almost every single match in the grand final, Bren always had the early advantage. But actually, on paper, Oni should be able to fight this off. One of the main reasons people pick Bashia is because of how strong he is in the early game, and here it will have been almost a 4v3. But well, probably because they are on the verge of losing the grand final, they are not as confident anymore. That is totally understandable. After losing all those previous turtle fights, they don't even want to bother contesting it anymore. But you know what, if you can steal a lot of the jungle and buff from the opposition while they are taking the turtle, in the end it's not that bad of a trade. No hesitation at all, Onyx having both Keyboy as well as Sans trying to create the illusion that they want to contest for it, but the illusion was shattered because Ogwen found out where Kyrie really was. Flaptisa is an absolute beast with Arlot. In fact, I think he had been playing extremely amazingly from the very first game. Now that Brent's roamer is so low, this should have been a pretty convincing turtle fight for Onyx. But just by looking at how they're engaging and using their skills, you could really see that they were having a little bit of a meltdown. To take him down for the third time this game, but on fine. You also take away gold from your opposing jungler, and now boots. He's taking a long way around. Boots will be taken out. AP Bren! And AP Bren is catching their, their mistakes. They're catching way more than just mistakes. They've been forcing mistakes out as well. All in on the Keyboy, the Roamer, a ton as well. Kaltisi put out the stacks. While Charge of Bren just grabs Keyboy, taking it down again! Six Phoenix in the game. AP Bren has five kills, four of those. His Keyboy, AP Bren. They have a target, and that target's name is Keyboy. No problem. Pearl is going to be available. They're forcing the retribution on Tyre once again. Level 10 to level 8. Once Onyx noticed that Akaltisi used his retribution to seal the buff, they all went straight for the turtle. It seemed like Bren was super confident that Onyx would not even attempt to take the turtle because Bren was so far ahead of them. Really worked out for them. Kyrie has retribution. AP Bren forced back. But it was just one turtle. The game was still pretty much in favor of Bren. Oh. 
Can we take it down again? This time it's Super Mario. Yeah, and right now again, Onyx, their mechanics are going to be tested here as AB Brand. Before this moment, the marksmen have been farming their respective lanes and were almost never involved in any team fights. That's why the roamers and fighters had a lot more freedom to engage and disengage as they pleased. This will be the first time Brent will clash when the opponent's marksman is there as well. That's why marksmen gotta prioritize and keep farming in the early game, despite what is happening in the rest of the lanes. You need those couple core items for that huge power spike. Bren probably noticed that Minotaur just completely wasted his ult. That's why they wanted to force the issue. Shot down, threading the needle, Sans. You will have the ultimate in both to be able to pop it, and I think the. I think this exact moment was the reason why Kyrie did what he did in Game 7 with Bakshia. He got a taste of that success of jumping to the bush and catching somebody off guard. But the difference is that this time, his teammates were in the vicinity ready to follow up. And that becomes very powerful. Kyrie knows it's time to go in right now. Flat easy. Crossbow tank already. Oh, final slash. Not what? able to cast it in time. But he gets bursted down. Two kills now. Looking for initiation astral echo man. once again revealing four boots flanking around just making a miss count is gonna be chucked down by the astral sphere Kyrie still on the lord flat easy not able to answer this final slash only on the keyboard bit of fury keyboard flies three that's another knock up to mark was still holding down the rear by back to the lady duet but cw with a crossbow of seven into the astral sphere now cw chasing few down forcing another brand tried to kill onyx roamers first but that definitely backfired. Unbelievable! What? Everyone! Oh. Huge for Mako taking a lot of damage! Amy Brand still protecting their base. Onyx doesn't find a way to go in. Amazing! Even though Flaptizi made a few blunders here and there with his overcommitment, you could still see that he really knows how to utilize Arlo to his full potential. It's true that this was 100% a misplay by bots, there's no denying that, but if you have watched and played this game long enough, you will know that fighters slash XP laners are usually the ones who tend to make those risky plays. That's why you will see that often time, they will get caught out of position while trying to surprise the opponent's backline. This way mechanics, and knowing each hero very well comes into place. Minotaur and 1-1 are gonna wait until Frederick uses dash before casting their skills. That way he has no chance to escape and 1-1 can easily trigger her ult. And talking about knowing each hero, I actually didn't know that Lilia's ult could cancel 1-1's ult. Probably that's one of the main reasons why Brent picked her in this match. Minotaurs will benefit a lot from Novaria's old. Timing was a bit off. Paquito getting caught and losing most of his HP before the Lord was there made it a bit more difficult for the team to fully commit. Look at boots. Very low, able to get the shield down. 
Also, when one casting our first kill like that, it means that even Minotaur managed to catch many of them, it will be highly unlikely she can trigger her ult. Very risky indeed. Has to recall out. He's keeping at it. He's keeping it. He's waiting for it. This will have been a huge pick off. Can he take off you? The assassin. 1v1. Black shoes used up. CW needs one crossbow attack. But he saves it. He saves it. He outplays you. But Lydia bought so much time without Winter Truncheon and Immortality. And at this stage of the game, trading the life of a marksman for a mage is definitely not worth it. Forcing it. So many mistakes and at the same time like making the mistakes their own. Carry 12 seconds before. This play was probably the main reason why Flaptisi got the MVP. And the late in favor of Onyx! Final slash! CW is down! Flaptisi! The final slash! The final to end in this game! For the wild charge! After this lord, it really seemed like this would spell the end for Onyx. Bren already had bad experience forcing the issue, so probably they didn't want to make that mistake again. Actually, this will be the play that cemented Flaptisi MVP status. Both waves dealt with, but AP Brenner slowly sieging. Flatizi. Oh, he's jumped in into the base. Look at this amazing teamwork from Bren. What a juggle! Marco there! Still gets out. Kyrie noticed they were all low, so he thought that this would have been a great chance to clash with them. But then only probably changed their mind because their maximum is still down. Another great ult by Flaptisi. Kari and Keyboy were in huge trouble. However, bots will make this play that probably saved Kari's life. Kill. 
That was Pew. CW. Oh, CW. Pew. Mortality bot. Black shoes. Dude, CW, man, as long as he survives, they're space moronic. Right now, they got the Lord. The minions have spawned. Onik can push right now. But look at the positioning here, Sans, CW, they're in the face of yeah. AB Brand. Sans is preventing Phil from laying down the clues so that there will be no defense. Sans with a place, the aggression, yeah. turning things around. We can hear now the chain coming in from Onik, oh boy. Sans looking Still. for a shot, Kyrie jumping in, CW. This might be the end for this game. Oh, Gwen running away. Onik has found a miracle!